All right, here we go, third take. What's up, everybody? I'm here with the Itchy Bond Don himself, better known as Willie B, TDE producer, rapper. I mean, everything you can list, man, this man is. Don't ask for your favorite rapper. Yes, sir. But like I said, when I was like 12, 13 years old, he kind of made me join the choir at church. You know what I'm saying? And so from then on, <clears throat> that's when my interest in music was, you know, as far as trying to do it myself, that's when it sparked. Because, um, you know, he used to play keys, and so I was kind of real interested in learning how to play keys. So all he did was, um, I'm not the greatest key player, but I can play piano. But uh, what he did was he went on Microsoft Excel and created, like, uh, one octave of keys and he just labeled them to show like you know A flat B flat C flat D blah 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 you know what I mean so for, in a nutshell I just when I, when I learned I just figured it out on myself you know on my own and just kind of learned different songs that I like to listen to by ear you know what I mean so that's kind of where it started and as far as rapping um, when I was 13 years old I copped the um, you know, I've always been a hip hop fan. You know what I'm saying? I was I was super Snoop Dogg and Ice Cubed out when I was a little kid. Like when I was like six, seven, eight years old. Ice Cube, Snoop Dogg, Ice Cube in particular. Like Ice Cubed out. Still to this day, I love Ice Cube. I don't yeah. I don't care. He be saying some crazy stuff now, but I love Ice Cube. So I started like in Tribe Called Quest. I was a big Tribe Called Quest fan, Black Sheep fan, um, Scarface, Ghetto Boys. You know what I'm saying? Um, but when I turned 13. I copped the, um, the, it was written by Nas, and it was written was the CD that made me want to start rapping. Um, back in 07, um, I was, I was working at, um, at, uh, Office Depot, and I had a homie named, uh, Dijon, where he goes by the name of Ronnell Parker, he's an MC as well. Um, we went to high school together and stuff, and so he had hit me. <clears throat> like on my break and he was just like yeah you know i'm meeting my homegirl there's a chick he used to talk to she was managing this artist her name was a lori joe so aka basically lori joe is you hear on a lot of kendrick stuff doing a lot of them back like whenever you hear a chick singing backgrounds that's a lori joe on kendrick stuff on a lot of tde records um shout out to a lori joe but um yeah, so basically, I met a Lori Joe in like 07, you know what I mean? Her and Javante, which is another dude who's always on the backgrounds of Kendrick stuff as well. So um, I met them. They're like a team. Like, they're best friends. They're an ill writing team or whatever. So basically, I had like some beats in my car or whatever, and I was like playing some records. Basically, I did a couple records on a Lori. One in particular was called uh, Love Me Harder. And Abso, you know, he's real good friends with a Lori. So what ended up happening was... Um, you know, he got at me. He, I guess, I guess he had a contact from a lawyer, my contact, and he got at me and was just like, "Yo, you know, let me get some records." Da, da 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 da. And I was like, "Cool." So I sent him some records, and that's when the nigga did Mayday, and that's when the nigga did um, Soul Cry. And so once I did them two records on him, you know, obviously the rest of the camp heard it. I met Q, I met Kendrick. And, uh, you know, Soul was the one who told me to come to the studio. So I just went over there and we vibed out for like six hours straight in the studio just on music. Like not even just our own music, but just music, like music that niggas grew up with. I gave Kendrick a couple records and gave Schoolboy a couple records. And, then, you know, Kendrick did Ignorance is Bliss. And then after that happened, I just started kind of noticing slowly on Twitter that a lot of niggas from TDE just started following me out of nowhere. And then out of I, out of the blue, one day I get a text from a number I don't even, you know I don't even recognize, and they like, what is it gonna take to make Willie be a part of TDE? And I'm like, who's this? And this is like, oh, this is Punch. And I'm like, shit, set up the meeting, my nigga. So that's how that happened. Went to the meeting. It was history. How important is social media now more for the not just for the artist but for the producer? Well, I mean, just the fact that everybody got access to the internet. I mean, you got to make use of that shit. Like, this don't. You know, had the internet and just, you know, just kind of take it for granted. Like, you got to really, like, you got to be out there. You know what I'm saying? Like, before, you know, uh, the whole TDE. Like, for example, if, if I had to be a funny nigga on Twitter just so niggas can hear my music, you know what I'm saying? Then I'll be that funny nigga. I'll say some funny shit. Because that's who I naturally am. You know what I'm saying? And I kind of use my personality to kind of sell my records. You feel what I'm saying? Even though the records kind of sell themselves. But... When when you a cool nigga at the same time, and and you make dope music, niggas fuck with you heavy. So it's kind of like 
that along with my personality and talent was just like it was too much so a lot of niggas started really gravitating towards me so that was a blessing i keep seeing the let's go i keep hearing about let's go let's go what what is that movement about man give us an inside track on what that let's go movement is about and how did it get started so like i said a couple of years ago me and siege was working um <clears throat> on a situation where you know he knew a couple of people that was kind of like an interscope that could um i guess you could say get certain records placed on detox you know what i'm saying and so basically <laughs> you know what i mean um you know at the time i felt like it was a good opportunity while we was in the studio recording one of the records me and Siege had obviously kind of saw that we had me and him had a good chemistry as far as him producing behind my rapping. You know what I'm saying? So, we was just in the studio one day. I was like, nigga, we should start a clique. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like a movement. And he was like, what are we going to call ourselves, son? Let's call ourselves the Let's Go Movement. And he was like, yeah, that's tight. Da -da -da. So, in a nutshell, that's kind of how it started off. Like, you know what I mean? We was in the studio and just kind of like came up with the idea right there. And then the homie Sago was like one of our closest homies in, in production and he was dope. So you should definitely be on the lookout for some new shit. And um, everything is looking good. Um, as far as Ichiban sound in 3D, um, what I noticed a lot of people was um, they were um, on the internet like remaking the rigor mortis beat. Because niggas was really trying to find an instrumental to bust on that shit. So, pause. But anyway, um, so a nigga was just like, you know what? I'm going I'm to give the fans what they want. I'm going to put the instrumental to rigor mortis on there. So, you know what I'm saying? So, that's the reason why I said I was going to do a beat tape. Because it would only make sense to put that. And then, you know, just so niggas can, like, enjoy. Just, you know, enjoy other instrumentals. Um... Also, Jay Dilla's a big influence in my production. Super. Like, like even with the, the promo we released today, that beat, like, even if you listen to the beat, you could probably hear the, the Dilla influence. Like, it's, it's that beat is super dilla out. But anyway, <clears throat> but, you know, Dilla was kind of like, in a nutshell, like the king of beat tapes. You know what I'm saying? And so I just wanted to kind of like, I wanted to be another nigga who put out a beat tape that was almost as celebrated as donuts was you feel what i'm saying so that's you know that's that's another reason why i want to put out ichiban sound of 3d so you, after you hear the the instrumental of rigor mortis you know just kind of let it sit because you'll notice that the track is like six minutes and 20 seconds long so rigor mortis normally is only two minutes and 48 seconds so you do the math yeah that jazz legend goes by the name of clifford brown um He's a trumpet player from Wilmington, Delaware. You know what I'm saying? Um, died at a very young age, but he was he was he was crazy. Like he was crazy. He was playing in, with so so many legends, like in his teens. You know what I'm saying? And what made it even crazier is that I was already a jazz head. So like I, I've been a jazz head since I was a kid. So that's why my sound is so dirty, jazzy, shit like that. Shout out to you know Clifford Jr. and Clifford the Third. You know what I mean? A day of TDE. In a nutshell, though, I'm going to tell you what, it's, what's a day of TDE? Niggas be cracking jokes. Kendrick is in the booth. Niggas just kind of be chilling. He say his verse. He do whatever. Nigga come out. Niggas cracking jokes. J-Rock go up in there and do his thing. Like his, This is what it's like in the studio with J-Rock. This is my nigga. Like, me and J-Rock is like this. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm cool with all of them. You know what I'm saying? I'm all my niggas, but, you know, like. I'll come to the studio like sometimes he just want me to come to the studio just to vibe because like that we just get we got energy like that and so <clears throat> like he'll start writing some shit and like he'll be kind of like pacing around right you know what i'm saying what niggas just be like bobbing their head to the beat nigga come up hey blood listen to this blood blood then the nigga start rapping in my ear nigga some 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 and i'll be like that's that shit hard right nigga that shit hard he's like no i'm recording this shit right now blood nigga call sound wave hey whistle Come to the studio, my nigga. You know, so I need you to engineer this session, my nigga. Where's will come through in some motherfucking pajama pants and nigga be half asleep and shit like that. And they come through real quick. You know what I'm saying? Record a session. Just about majority of the time, 80% of the time, niggas just cracking jokes. That's all we do. Crack jokes. That's all we do. Yeah, you know, as far as artists, you know what I'm saying, I love to work with. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to work with uh, Chase and Cash. You know what I'm saying? <laughs>
that's who I want to work with. Bad, like Dipset, period. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because I really fuck with their music. Like, they have a lot of character. They have fun with that shit. Definitely Jeezy. Jeezy. Um, um, I love to work with the clips. For some reason, I want to get one off on E40. I don't know why. I want to get one off on E40. I want to get one off on E40. And it'll be kind of dope just to kind of get one off on Snoop as well. Go out and support this, man. Support TDE. And I just want to say thank you personally, man, for, for the opportunity, man. And uh, thank you for sharing your journey with us. Just hit me on Twitter. Uh, let's go Willie TDE. That's W-I-L-L-I-E, not Y. Um, let's go Willie TDE um, on Twitter. My website will be up soon, itchybondon.com. There you have it, Nick Hamilton with the one and only Willie B, TDE producer extraordinaire. <laughs>